Greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the whole Bible tour in three years. Turning our Bibles to Psalm 22, verses 22 to 31. You know, we, we've seen in the first 21 verses the anguish, the agony, the despair of the man of the psalm. And uh, from 22 onwards, we see the happy result or the happy consequences of his prayer. In verse 22, he says, I will declare your name to my people in the assembly. I will praise you. So uh, agony in prayer always, always it may be sometimes here, sometimes in eternity, but it is always going to result in praise. When we have a genuine agony, a, a, a spiritual agony, a God-glorifying agony in our hearts, and we lay it before the Lord in prayer, then we are going to one day praise Him for that prayer. And uh, sometimes it may be in a way, it can be answered in a way that we expect, Sometimes it can be in a, answered in a way that God uh, wants it to be. Or in other words, that may be contrary to our wish, but every prayer that God answers is, is in a way that glorifies God. So uh, we ought to never, never give up, never be in despair, never leave, but always, always anchor onto the Lord and know that he will answer our prayer. And we also see that this prayer, this agony of the man of the psalm uh, reaches very far corners in verse 22. It reaches the assembly of saints. And then going forward in verse uh, 25, it reaches the great assembly, that is a wider assembly. And then in verse 26, it reaches the poor and uh, those who seek the Lord. And then even 27th verse, it says, to the ends of the earth. And 27th verse, it says, all the families of the nations. And uh, verses uh, 30, it talks about the future generations. And 31, it talks about people who are not yet born. So the anguish of this man of the psalm, especially we've been seeing that this psalm mostly points to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ is affecting so many people. The anguish of the cross, the languid of the cross, the uh, agony of the cross, the pain of the cross, the propitiation and the substitution of the Lord Jesus on the cross. It is far reaching out to this ends that, uh, you know, um, if we interpret these things, it is reaching out to the whole, whole world of believers and to the whole world of Gentiles and to the whole uh, world of humanity that is seeped and fallen into sin. So we see that the um, agony of the Lord Jesus on the cross is not in vain. It has caused a great assembly uh, to exist and it has caused great joy in the hearts of many. And it is, it is definitely the only source of justification to man. And it is also the only source of uh, uh, judgment that is going to fall upon people in the future. So this is the only gospel. There is no second gospel. And we are so blessed because Jesus went through all this pain. And today we have this great and we have this wonderful privilege of being uh, recipients of the goodness of the mercy of his pain on the cross. And today our sins have been paid for in full. The ransom has been over. There is no more the wrath of God. You know, no deed is punished twice. And so when we believe that the agony of the cross, the, the propitiation on the cross has been a substitute for us, then there is no more condemnation for us. Romans 8 and verse 1 says, so we ought to totally stand upon this finished work of the cross. And the repercussions are the, of this prayer of this agony on the cross, is it is reaching even to the far ends of the earth and uh, to the generations yet unborn. So this shows that it is an eternal gospel. It is a universal gospel and it is the only gospel. And uh, to whom is this uh, really uh, bearing so much of fruit? Uh, we see that there are at least uh, a few categories of people to, towards whom this cross or this uh, work of the cross or this work of um, the suffering of the 
messiah really is uh, benefiting the first category of people are people who fear the lord in verse 23 it says people who fear the lord that is uh, you know the salvation of the lord is going to definitely definitely bring about a fear in people towards the lord and this is not uh, a fear of punishment but this is a reverent fear a fear that is filled with love a fear that is filled with reverence a fear that is filled with gratitude so the the one towards whom this prayer is actually directed is for those who fear the lord and um, when how can we really make use of the work of the cross of the work of propitiation is by having a reverent fear for the lord so those who fear the lord are being blessed through the cross and then uh, those who it goes on to say uh, in 25th verse those who belong to this great assembly or who are a part of this fellowship who follow the lord as a corporate body these people are blessed by the cross they are really blessed by the cross and not just that um, uh, we go on to see in verse 26 the poor these people are satisfied you know the poor means uh, the, those who are poor in the spirit that is those who recognize their emptiness their total total depravity those who recognize that they are they are unable to meet the lord based on their own righteous deeds these people draw so much draw so much from the cross and then those who seek the lord in verse 26 uh, um, these people are searching for the lord as they are searching for the lord there is no other place where they can really find the lord they can get an answer but when they come to the cross when they come to the cross there they meet the lord and there their questions are answered and there their seek comes to an end um, there their hunger is satisfied and we see that uh, um, even the ends of the earth uh, will remember and they will turn to the lord so if we really want to make sense of the cross really want to make sense of the substitution of the lord jesus christ then obviously we need to be people who turn to the lord who who put out our prayers before the lord and who remember the lord in verse 27 it says those who remember and who turn to the lord so uh, the cross is is something that really really blesses those who take it seriously you know the cross is not is is not an even or the agony of this man of the psalm is not something that really uh, you know just blindly uh, sways people into the kingdom of god no it is not just taking people to heaven but it is people taking people and changing them transforming them making them worthy of fellowship with god so we ought to recognize that the salvation that the lord provides is not just going to just uh, pick us up from here and drop us into the eternal presence of god no it is going to pick us up from here and change us transform us transform the desires of our heart transform the motives of our mind transform all of this into a way wherein we become worthy by his grace to stand in his presence and and we will start to enjoy him so uh, the cross is not just a transportation but the cross is a transformation in the hearts of uh, its seekers and uh, um, we also see um, that uh, those who uh, have been uh, you know affected by the cross or those who have been blessed by the cross their reaction to this deliverance is so beautiful they react with fear they react with joy and obviously all of these uh, are are pointing towards the resurrection of christ uh, because exactly exactly in verse 22 uh, it says i will declare your name to my people in the assembly i will praise you now this is mentioned in the new testament hebrews chapter 2 and verse 12 which says he says i will declare your name to my brothers and sisters in the assembly i will sing your praise and uh, this is pointing to the resurrected christ so uh, this psalm is not only beginning with the cross but it is ending with resurrection it is ending with the glorious work of salvation being finished and a glorious hope uh, uh, being put forth uh, for all those who are eagerly diligently looking to god for salvation so our prayers don't go in vain like how the prayers of the messiah did not go in vain and the the sufferings of the lord don't go in vain the cross doesn't go in vain so 
uh, what should be our response? Our response should be threefold. The first response should be a response of gratitude, wherein we praise God for his cross. We bow our heads in gratitude and reverence, honoring God and telling him, Lord, Lord, you are totally sufficient. You are totally enough. And, and thank you for what you have done for me. So the first response towards the cross should be a response of gratitude. The second response towards uh, the cross should be a response of faith, uh, wherein we, we stand not upon our righteousness, but we stand upon the work of the cross. And when we stand upon faith, uh, the, the power of Christ is imputed upon us, or the power, the grace of God flows into us. And today, now we st when we stand upon the person uh, and the work of, of Christ by faith upon the cross the, by faith, uh, oh, we are counted righteous, we are counted complete, we are counted the righteousness of God because of faith. Uh, we, we, are, we are transformed because of faith. And the third response is uh, uh, a responsibility to carry forth this cross, the news of this cross, the joy of this cross, to people who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, people who are far from the cross, people who are enemies to the cross. So there should be an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of faith, and an attitude of responsibility that we have towards the cross. And this is the right way how we can deal with the cross. And uh, if, if we miss on any one of them, it simply means that our faith on the cross is not real or our life of the cross is not practical or the love towards our neighbor is not real because if your faith is right then you are counted as uh, uh, righteous and if your faith is right then you live right and you live a life of gratitude and you carry this news to the dying world because there is no other news that is going to save men there is no other work this is the only way in which man can be saved from the power of sin from the uh, penalty of sin and be wooed into the presence of God, being made worthy in order to glorify this God. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the agony of your cross and also the victorious ending wherein you finished on the cross and arose again victoriously to give us your life, O oh Lord, to give us your victory, to give us your uh, uh, your imputed righteousness so, uh, so we worship you Lord help us to always carry this responsibility faith and uh, always stay in the center of your will. Jesus wonderful precious name we pray Amen mm -hmm.